What's up, influencers? I'm here with Brian, and today we're talking about how to be a daily vlogger, combine two passions into one channel, and still raise a family right now. This interview is brought to you in part by vloggerfair.com. What's up, influencers? Welcome to another interview with Brian Lanny. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Daily Bumps. Thank you for having us be able to interview you. Yeah, totally. This Superstar. is awesome. Superstar. You know, I've known uh, Brian for a while now. I've seen you kind of have this explosion of success. But, of course, there's a lot of hard work. So that's why I really wanted to interview you. No, go check it out. Daily Bumps vlogger and superstar musician. So you would, <laughs> Thanks, man. You know, when I first Thanks, met man. you, I was like, whoa, man, you got some <laughs> pipes on him. So I you appreciate guys it. check it out. But I really wanted to first ask you, number one, to share your journey of this YouTube success you've had, which obviously started somewhere. You started at zero, mm -hmm. right? And the hard work it, work it took. And share that a little bit about that experience to where you are today. Yeah, totally. So uh, my wife and I, we were a young married couple and we wanted to start a family. Um, and we had gone through a couple of hardships with it, mm. as is pretty normal. Yeah. Um, and my wife really wanted to share her experiences. So she started blogging yeah. online, writing and, um, you know, sort of telling her story, telling her feelings um, and kind of her plans. And one day I logged into her blogger account and I saw that she had like 100,000 reads yeah. in that month. And I was like, whoa, babe, a lot of people are reading this. And she had no idea yeah. because she was using it as like a personal diary. Yep. Um, and she's like, I, I know a lot of people are reading, but I'm not over writing. I don't really enjoy writing. And she's like, I really have been watching these YouTubers. Yeah. What year was this? Uh, 2011 okay, or 12, yeah, yeah, 2011 yeah. or 12. She's like, I've been watching these YouTuber, YouTubers talk about like getting pregnant and starting yep, a family. Yep. And I was like, what? That's a thing. <laughs> and she's like, I kind of want to do the same thing. So we jumped right in and she started um, her channel. We talked about um, you know, some of the struggles that we had gone through trying yep, to have yep. a family. And uh, then when that kind of took off, a lot of people wanted a lot more yep. of us. Yep. And so we started another channel called Daily Bombs and sort of challenged myself to really share our life every day. Yep, and, yep. you know, we were pregnant with Oliver. Um, she was about three months pregnant with Oliver. So yep. we kind of have everything since then to now. Now he's three years old. So we started when he was, she was three months pregnant and now he's three years old. Yeah, <laughs> Amazing. Well, first off, congratulations. You Thanks, know, man. Obviously on the surface, people just assume it's like, you know, like, especially with how fast you grew that, that you got lucky, right? But I know for a fact, because I've talked to you for the last couple of years, I know how hard you've worked. Can yeah. you talk about the hustle it takes to just be a YouTuber in general, right? And specific to your journey and uh, the things that you had to do to get to where you're at. Yeah, I hustled for sure. Mm -hmm. I, at one point, um, I was doing, I was a full-time graphic designer at a church. Yep. I was waiting tables at a steakhouse. I was doing freelance wedding photography. Yep. And then I was filming and editing every day for our daily channel. So that's seven videos a week throw three more videos a week on top of that for Missy's channel, which I was also filming and editing for her. So I totally know that hustle yeah. and that it, it got to a place where I was like, I have to choose something yep. Yep. because everything was which kind of good, good, good problem to have. Yeah, it, it was. And it, you know, it was one of those things right after we moved back to California that everything started to sort of form this uh -huh, way. Uh -huh. um, I was getting a lot more wedding gigs. I was getting a lot more work and responsibility yeah. at the church. Um, you know, being a server, you make good money yep, yep. <laughs> and our YouTube was blowing up. And, but we, it got to a point where right after Oliver was born, we had to choose yeah. and I had sat down with Missy and I was like, this week has been crazy. Yeah. I feel like I've barely seen Oliver yeah. and I was like, we have to choose something. And so that was a point where I was able to walk away from all those normal jobs and step into this whole unknown territory of YouTube. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I love hearing about your experience, because you know, I don't know a lot beyond what I see on the vlogs, right? Mm. But a lot of your experiences before YouTube have served you. So a lot of people yeah. say, oh, it took you four years to get to where you're at. It actually probably took you 
much longer. Yeah, and that's some true. Some of those jobs yeah. have served you. Can you tell about how those experiences are important to your success now and how other people can maybe relate to that, what you would want to say to that for, for new YouTubers? I've always been an entrepreneur, and I think that's one of the biggest qualities that you have to have as a YouTuber. Yeah. I've always sort of had that mindset of, what is something that I can do that I love, and how do I make money from it? Yeah. And I've been really good pre-YouTube at doing that, you yeah. know, taking photos of something I loved, um, shooting video with something yeah. I loved, wedding, I loved editing. Wedding, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I f definitely feel like all of that sort of served a purpose. Um, I think a pivotal moment was in college when I decided to not become a computer science major. Yeah. Two years in, and I switched to an art major. Mm -hmm. And I started yep. studying design and yeah. graphics and and video and photo. And I, I feel like, you know, I did that for a year, and I feel like just even that year yeah. helped me get to where I am Absolutely. today. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I love using Casey Neistat as an example. You know, a lot of people would just assume he just came on the spot, you know, last five years. but. He's been doing video for a very long time, right? Yeah. So like that experience before you even started that YouTube channel, um, that's what we try to relate to our viewers, right? Like mm -hmm. especially new people creating their channels today. Do you have any advice for people maybe that doesn't have a skill um, yet or is trying to find what they're passionate about when it comes to starting a YouTube channel? I would say just don't be discouraged because yeah, if you look at a lot of popular YouTubers who are making it a career, they've had a lot of steps pre-YouTube that sort of led them to that. So you kind of have to factor that in and say, well, it's, I've been making videos for two years. How come nothing's happening? Yeah. Well, it's because you also didn't do five years of business school and w weren't studying yeah. photography and stuff. So I would say it's really easy to get discouraged with the amount of time you put into it. But all of that will make a difference eventually. Absolutely. What is your number one tip for a vlog channel title and thumbnail baby Woo. fire that's all it is totally yeah. it has nothing to do with description has nothing to do with tags i would say even the the amount you upload yeah. it's all about title and thumbnail yeah, and for Judy, sure she edits all the videos right <clears throat> and literally after spending sometimes one to two hours just producing content she'll spend another 20 minutes just on the thumbnail because totally. she understands that and that's too. the most important part even on this channel video influencers sean spends a lot of time making sure that that captures your attention so mm. i love that uh it's very practical you know yeah. you didn't get all phys philosophical which there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it right but anybody can learn from that because you know one thing that people forget YouTube is a search engine. Yeah. People are searching for things. and People that are searching and clicking, and they're going to click on what works. You know, Absolutely. So you got to think about bright colors. you got to yep. think about you know, a sense of mystery where yep. you're not giving it all away. Um, those are all super important. All right, last question before the lightning round. Okay. Uh, you also do music, right? You sing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about how <laughs> that's enhanced your vlog channel or vice versa and how you've combined two passions to create what you do on YouTube? Well, you know, I've been singing since I was so little. Mm -hmm. I would annoy my mom so yeah. much just running around the house singing. So I've been singing forever, and it was kind of something that I stopped doing because I was, I was bullied a lot yeah. in high school for it. Okay. So it was kind of something I put on the back burner and didn't really um, ever really address. But I think being on YouTube, having an audience, you know, having so much su support from people really gave yeah. me a lot more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And I was able to, you know, write my first single two years ago, This Is Home, yeah. um, get it produced and put it on, on iTunes. And, you know, now it's sold over 100,000 copies. Wow. And that's from being an independent artist. Yeah. But having this, this audience that is so connected with what you do, they're even more connected to my music because yeah. my music is about what we vlog about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's been really fun. And, it, and I feel like people have been loving getting to see a lot of the behind the scenes, yeah. getting to see me working in the studio or on set with music videos yeah. um, and even you know I've, a couple of times I've, I've vlogged like some songwriting sessions yeah. and stuff people yeah. really enjoy being a part of the whole process I love how you, you actually did it backwards compared to most other people most people mm -hmm. would start with the music right and then do a vlog you guys started with a vlog right with Missy's mm -hmm. following with kind of your circumstances in life and then you revisited your uh, love for music right yeah. and th that's what I love about YouTube there are no rules with this right like no. No. I You're, think there's some guidelines yeah. like, you know, thumbnail, title, uh, ranking, but still, you should do this the way you want it. Is there anything you want to talk about? Because I think that you are so different than a lot of vloggers because obviously you're a musician, but mm -hmm. found that passion afterwards. Can you talk to that a little bit? Well, I think that 
our viewers are, are watching us for a reason. They're watching us because every, every family member, you know, Oliver, Finn, Missy, me, we all bring something different to the table in our vlog. And if we were all doing the same thing or if it was just focused on one person, yeah. it really wouldn't be a family vlog. Yeah. So what I try to do when I'm filming our vlog is I'd really try to split up the attention. Mm. And if you go through our thumbnails, you'll even see a split of attention there. It's, you know, if there's a thumbnail with Ollie the next day, I'll make sure it's something different and that everyone sort of gets that ample time. Yep. Um, because I never want it to be the Ollie show or I never want it to mm -hmm. be the yep. Brian show and his yep. music. Um, so people get really invested in each thing that we do. So for, for Missy, people are following, um, you know, how she is growing at being a mom yep. and, and overcoming certain things in her life to get to where she is. As for Oliver, they're seeing him learn to be potty trained, yeah. you know, and, and play Family well with talk. others. <laughs> and then for me, they get to see, you know, behind the scenes of my music. So yeah. people are invested in every sort of aspect. Music is a really great piece of that because yeah. it's something that we love. Yeah. So lightning round, this is just where we have a little lightning. bit of fun. Okay. What, I know you guys <laughs> just flew here, but what's the last thing you remember grabbing out of the fridge? Milk. That's a bit dad answer. It's always there. milk for chocolate milk. <laughs> oh, for chocolate Dada, milk. Dada, can I have some chocolate milk? <laughs> Social media app of uh, choice right now. Instagram. Instagram. Oh, and Instagram stories. Instagram stories. It's fun. It's a hack right and now. And they just, they just added links in oh. stories. Game they, changer. They literally have changed the game. Okay, which would you rather give up? Movies and TV or social media? Movies and TV. Boom. Very popular. I, I had a YouTuber that actually said uh, social media today. <laughs> way. They must be real. They must be like halfway through a season and oh, they're yeah. like, I'm not stopping that until oh, yeah. I know what happens. <laughs> Netflix. Last question. What is the channel that you like watching right now on YouTube? Uh, uh, uh. So much pressure. Um, That's why I love asking it. Ryan's toy reviews. Ryan's toy reviews. <laughs> um, if you're a dad, or yeah, a friend, you, know. you know what's up. <laughs> That's the one, Ollie. I want to watch Ryan. It's so funny with Ollie and Ryan could be dad, best friends. You end up watching what your kids are watching. It is true. It's not like, the first choice <laughs> of yours. You know, I'm like, are you sure you don't want to watch Casey Neistat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. No. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Yeah, dude. I thanks for having. Me. Yeah, uh, you know, like I know that you're very busy. Uh, you've had a lot of success, but you know, you, you still keep it very humble in your vlog. You guys are trying to like, you know, be a family and do normal. We're things. families first, yeah. vloggers second. Family. That's how it is. And the last thing I want to ask you for anybody out there that wants to start a channel, what would be some advice for those people aspiring to be a YouTuber, their own YouTuber? Don't set too high of expectations for yourself. Yeah. Because you don't want to let yourself down. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, and go not going into it with a with a motive. You yeah, know what I mean? And go at your own pace, right? Totally. You know, and yeah, success totally. looks different for everybody. Oh right? yeah, for sure. You don't have to have a million subscribers to be successful, right? Like, yeah. In fact, uh, we've interviewed people with ten thousand or less subscribers that I would say legit or successful. So yeah, great advice. You guys, you can find Brian. We'll put the links uh, down below anywhere. You guys, Thanks, man. Uh, tell people to find you at. Yeah, I mean, go check out our daily vlog channel, YouTube com slash daily bumps okay and then I did uh, just put up a new music video on my music channel youtube.com slash Brian Lanning go check it out Benji Travis <laughs> oh sorry I'm are you recording to... on this? <laughs> are we recording we're gonna do a whole thing <laughs> ASMR whisper interview yo yo uh, I'm how's here your vlog going it's pretty good how's your vlog okay we talk a little louder than this people are watching